All right, this morning, I'm addressing this to the public and YouTube itself. Susie, I'm asking where I was wrong. Um, you're going to hear this morning from doctors a lot of evidence that uh, they're using the same words I used uh, two and a half years ago. And censorship is murder. And it's, it's very wrong. And you're going to hear that from doctors, too. Um, I wasn't wrong. And there's extensive knowledge on these subjects. That, that This is not new. But it's very wrong. I was told about this as top senatorial investigator in 2014. The reason I have been so accurate over here on the bit shoot is because I was very accurate on this platform. And as an investigator, you have done damage. I'll tell you this much. This guy right here has a $3 million lawsuit because he was censored and defamed like you did to me. This guy, Dr. John Campbell, teaches nurses. Today's talk, Wednesday the 4th of January. Now I'm going to be looking at a very important study today from Cleveland, Ohio. And this shows that amongst 50,000 employees, the more COVID vaccines they had, the more infections that they got. The more vaccines they had, the more infections they got. And I strongly suspect that the FDA and the seed COVID-19, um, clearly these regulatory bodies are going to be desperate to blow them up. So um, what it shows was vaccine doses versus a COVID risk during the three months of the study period. So compared to people that weren't vaccinated, that had never been vaccinated, one dose of vaccine, those people were 1.7 times more likely to test uh, positive for COVID during the three months of the study. Not quite twice as likely, but nevertheless 1.7. These were more than twice as likely. Uh, two point, people that had two doses, 2.63 times more likely to test positive for COVID during the three months of this study. Uh, but it gets worse. Uh, those who had uh, three doses of vaccines were 3.1 times more likely to test positive for COVID during the study. And those that had more than three doses were 3.8 times more likely to test positive for COVID during the study. And here is actually the, uh, the graphic they produced on this. So what we actually see here is um, the, 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 this started on the 12th of September. This was the first day of the study through the 98th day of the study. Now, people that had, and this is the accumulative risk for getting a COVID-19 uh, infection uh, or testing positive, but they did test quite readily because it was a health facility. So no doses of the vaccine, it went up during the course of the study. One dose of the vaccine, it went up more, more infections. Two doses, it went up more three doses it went up more. So we see the more vaccines people received, the greater the risk that they tested positive for COVID during the course of the study. 99 out of 1,000 confident that this is a genuine result. It's a highly significant result. In other words, uh, it's 99% 9 likely to be a genuine uh, result, P equals 0 0.001. One. So if you need to dash off, that's the main points I wanted to get across. But if you've got time, I'm going to give you some more evidence. Yeah. Now, as we say, this is a preprint study. So it's one that people will be scrabbling to uh, duplicate um, around the world because it's such a momentous study. Strange, I haven't heard it published in the mainstream media vaccine. It's got the original vaccine plus BA4-5 uh, antigens, spike proteins, basically, from those. Not the antigens, the mRNA codes for production of those in our own body cells. Now these were approved without demonstration of effectiveness in human clinical studies and they were approved without demonstration of safety in human clinical studies. So there are bivalent COVID vaccine protects against COVID-19. That's what the study was about. 51,000 employees. Cumulative index of COVID-19 was examined over the period of weeks and as we say that is the study there uh, in terms of vaccine. The cumulative incidence of COVID-19 was uh, analysed. Uh, protection provided by recent and prior, via prior vaccination was evaluated. So they looked at protection from previous vaccine, which is here, showing that the more vaccines you have had, the more likely you are to be infected. 
And they also looked at natural immunity, which is here. So what this shows is that people who've been not previously infected, of course, were most likely to get infected. People that were infected a long time ago, Delta phase and pre-Delta phase, were not as likely to get infected as people that were never infected, but more likely. People that have been infected with Omicron BA, like, like the Delta and the pre-Delta, they got more infections than the people who were infected with the most recent variants down here. So no surprise there. So they collected the data on the uh, natural immunity, which is great, and the vaccine immunity there, which showed the increasing risk for the increasing doses of vaccine. Now, first bivalents were given on the 12th of September. That's the course of the study. Uh, 51,000 employees. Um, 20,000, 41% had had a previous documented episode of COVID. So in other words, these, these are big numbers. You can get good stats out of these numbers. Uh, 42,000 had received two doses of vaccine. 10,000 had received a bivalent dose of vaccine. And uh, COVID had previously occurred in... Uh, COVID occurred in 2,452, 5% during the course of the study. So again, they've got good numbers to do the studies on. Uh, mostly Pfizer, some were given Moderna, no other vaccines were used. And they found the risk of COVID-19 increased with the time since the most recent prior COVID episode. As we know, immunity has waned from natural infection. Uh, and they found that the risk of COVID-19 increased increased with the number of vaccines. So the more vaccines, the more cases of COVID were diagnosed. That's the one relating to natural immunity. That's the one relating to uh, infections. The heart of your, your question is the spike protein. Um, I recognize that the mRNA technology, and, and this relates to these newer vaccines you're talking about as well, because the common thing about them is the spike protein. Um, but that the mRNA technology, that these vaccines were not staying in the injection site, uh, but rather getting distributed throughout the body. And the reason why that was of concern to me was because the spike protein is a highly bioactive molecule in the human body. And if it gets, if it were to get systemically distributed, there are a lot, a lot of potential mechanisms of harm that it could cause. Uh, and so what's shared by all the vaccines is targeting the spike protein. The theory being that if you generate neutralizing antibodies against a spike protein, the virus cannot infect our cells because it uses the spike protein to get inside our cells. Uh, and so all the vaccines have that. But these newer vaccines as well, even though they're more traditional technologies, uh, and one of the things that I like about them is the, the dose of the spike protein can be much better controlled. But there's still, there's still um, aspects of this. Uh, the lipid nanoparticle delivery technology, for example, um, and again, the lipid, it's the lipid nanoparticle technology that was, has traditionally been developed to promote wide distribution of whatever the cargo is that it's carrying, whether it be the spike protein itself, or whether it be the messenger RNA encoding the spike protein, or historically what they were used for more commonly was as a drug delivery system. So as it pertains to the lipid nanoparticle, uh, the two, two things, I, we, we have a, um, this is long known medicine. This guy here makes vaccines right here. He has a $3 million lawsuit because of censorship, Susie. Seriously. As a top senatorial investigator, I got to say, I've taken some damage from your censorship. These are my words, because it was well known long ago. It's where you activate the immune response. So what surprised me was not that there was the wide biodistribution. It was that the public messaging made me assume that there were some proprietary changes that it... Public messaging means what we were told because what we didn't, what we knew was being suppressed. Three million dollar lawsuit here to the lipid nanoparticles that kept them from being widely you know dis distributed throughout the body oh, so that's what so that's what that's what surprised me was that i realized well there's some a real disconnect here between the science so the science is as i understood it to be um 
but it doesn't match the public messaging. Uh, and then the second thing was the, the, the bioactivity, because again, at the end of the day, you could say, what's the issue if the spike protein gets distributed throughout the body? But the problem now, uh, Dr. Drew, is that there are uh, about 20 different known bioactivities that could potentially cause harm with this spike protein. Yeah. Uh, and that's the issue. Yeah. So, so my concern right. was wide systemic distribution of a protein that can cause harm. Um, take us back, if you don't mind, to sort of the 50,000 or maybe 100,000 foot level to talk a little bit about mRNA, um, just for the purpose of our, our viewers. Although these uh, injections, and I won't call them vaccines either, we'll go back to that, these mRNA injections are new. mRNA technology is not new. Uh, it, people, scientists have been working on this for well over a decade. We've had the good fortune to have uh, people like Dr. Robert Malone on to talk about it and others. But I would like it if you could at least give us a heavily brief, studied sort of, and published you know, uh, review from your perspective of why exactly there's never been an mRNA. Well before this began. A shot or vaccine launched successfully previous to these yeah so yeah it's, a, it's a, a great question so I, I guess you know we can start with the lipid nanoparticle technology because that was a key that's a key platform for delivering these messenger rna molecules well so i guess let's let's start with those so natural messenger rna is incredibly unstable uh it, it, incredibly fragile so for example my my research team works with it all the time uh if you you have to use um, extremely, you know, sophisticated research techniques to make sure that you don't contaminate it. And, and actually, um, so one point that's of interest is this current rollout of the messenger RNA vaccines is not the first uh, clinical use. It, uh, actually, these have been tested in veterinary medicine and have been in veterinary clinical trials for some time, um, just as a matter of interest. Uh, and so the technology has been under development for a long uh, under development for a long time. But there's first of all, say in terms of messenger RNA vaccines for coronaviruses, yeah, coronavirus vaccines have been have proven to be very problematic. There's been a long history of trying to induce immune responses against coronaviruses that backfired. Where actually what ended up happening is the vaccines started actually in many cases promoted the disease. We call that vaccine enhanced disease what turned out is that animals that were, were these um so, so here's an interesting little bit of history with the sars coronavirus one when that virus when we were dealing every word he said was long 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 like decades long he used the word decade decades this has been studied for a long time and it has never worked and i was pointing that out and you took away my channel for factually reporting the same words this man here is speaking he makes vaccines for God's sake how in the hell can you justify what you've done to me that's a question I have how can you justify what you've silenced from doctors on this platform this is hideous what did you hear how people feel that the swaying and the censorship has changed the actual outcome of the pandemic we heard that in the opening statements of doctors saying these words what were you thinking comes to mind and how are you going to fix this that's messed up that definitely lawsuit from many different angles i've had damage due to this missing vaccines that didn't prove 18, to be a particularly you know dangerous or long lasting outbreak um but a lot of people continue to pursue the promising vaccine technology uh, and it appeared, appeared promising because these vaccines induced very robust immune responses. But robust immune responses does not necessarily equal protection. And what ended up happening is animals in the research trials that got vaccinated ended up developing more severe disease when they got the infection. And that's because it was the wrong type of immune response that was induced.
So that's right, been me, a problem me, with. Yeah, so saying, let, let me let me see if I can um, get in here and just try to, try to summarize ago, this said. portion of it. Then from what you're saying, so number one, yes. we've got mRNA technology that relies on mRNA, which is very fragile, very. Um,